I was uh, sitting in this office. The entire IT department's going to quit. Uh, I said, OK, <laughs> that's interesting. And uh, he said, uh, unless you accede to a couple of demands that we have. And I said, what are your demands? <laughs> and he said, well, we have three. He said, number one, uh, from here forward, we only want to do programming in Java. And I said, OK. And, he, and uh, he said, number two, from here forward, we only want to use Oracle as our database vendor. I don't know if there's any Oracle people in the room, but, but to the extent you're negotiating with us, we do look at other vendors. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and number three, we have to embrace the internet. And this was in 1997, the year that we were, we were all getting those, uh, those busy signals. And so I said to him, look, um, I don't know Java from a hot rock. I don't care. I don't know what, how people program. And so, fine, done. Secondly, I don't even know what Oracle is. And um, uh, if, that, if you think that's that important, then use Oracle. But number three, the internet, I said, you, you have to be on drugs. If you don't understand that we are going to try to trade electric power with electric utilities. Electric utilities run nuclear power plants. Electric utilities have the guys with little microphones in their ears and guns that are like standing in the corner of your office here. They don't, they're not going to embrace the internet. They're not going to want to uh, put their transaction business on this thing. And in 1997, we were debating whether or not you could put a credit card over the internet. And, um, and he said, you know, look, uh, we can all go get jobs and get uh, stock options and live in Silicon Valley and, and all this other stuff, and we're all going to do it unless you let us do this. So I made a deal with him that I would let him uh, embrace the internet if he would run it side by side with our T1 WorldCom network. Uh, and he agreed with that. And so we sat there and I said, is there anything else? And he goes, no, well, you know, what do you want to do? And I said, I, you, didn't, you didn't give me a choice. I just bought the, I've been here for 10 minutes and everybody's going to walk out the door. So uh, as long as you keep the T1 network, you're good. And he said, okay, uh, that's it? I said, that's it, I, you know? And, uh, and I said, oh, one last thing. Um, I want you to be my chief technology officer. And he said, uh, I'm not the chief technology officer and I am one of the computer programmers. And I said, why did you come in here? He said, well, we had a meeting, and, I, and they nominated me. And I said, <laughs> you're the chief technology officer. <laughs> so um, anyway, Edwin Marcel is sitting over here. And uh, <laughs> yeah, you graciously gave him one of those swords a couple years ago, and, and, and well, well deserved. The other thing um, that I learned about talking uh, and trying to manage technologists was that uh, they think differently than, than I did as, a, as, as really a manager. And um, we started to grow and we were buying Dell computer. We just, one of the things Edwin did, and it was brilliant, aside from embrace the internet, by the way, the T1 network went the same way Bernie Evers went. Uh, it, it's gone. And, um, and one of the things that we did is, is embrace commodity hardware. So we were using Dell blade servers. And uh, I will tell you that uh, uh, we have built the fastest, most robust uh, network for trading that exists in the world. And it's partly why we're, we outperform all of our peers. And we do so at a much lower cost because of commodity hardware. So we started to get these boxes from the UPS guy every day with all this Dell stuff in it. And he would drop it off in the lobby of this little office that we have. And guys would come and get it and install it. And over time, this Dell stuff started stacking up in the lobby. And it became effectively a de facto storage room. And, and one day, I had some investors coming in. And I said to one of our IT guys, 
get that crap out of the lobby. We got some important guys coming in. And they're coming in in two days. You got to go find a home for this stuff. So I come back in the next morning, and about a third of it is gone. And about a third of it, the boxes are all open. And the, stu the stuff is all gone, but he's left all the boxes and stuff in the lobby. And the lobby looked like a bomb went off. And um, so I said, where is this kid? And uh, I wanted to talk to him that that wasn't my intent. And so they said, he's out at his car. So I walk out into the parking lot. And here's this car, and it's stacked full of all those styrofoam pieces that come inside the box that hold computers. I'm talking completely stacked. And I said to him, what are you doing? And he said, I'm taking the styrofoam home. And uh, I said, I didn't tell you to take the boxes apart and you know, just take all that stuff and put it in the trash and get those boxes out of there. I really got these important guys coming. And uh, he said, no, I'm not, I'm not taking this, these styrofoam pieces to the dump. I, I, I want them. And I said, why? And he says, because my Dungeons and Dragons club, we use them to make our uniforms. <laughs> and I realized at that moment that there's a disconnect between <laughs> what's important to me and having a clean lobby and what's important to that kid. And, and, and the reality is, and I'm not trying to paint our IT guys as nerds, they're, they're, they're uh, my closest friends in life, but um, I did learn, and, and it became really important to the company to realize that, uh, that people that manage technology um, think differently than people that, that manage businesses. And, and if you can get those two to intersect, it becomes incredibly powerful. And, and, and again, thanks to Edwin and his team, uh, we found that intersection and, and have, have massively outperformed uh, our peers. One other story I wanted to mention to you uh, for those that are starting small businesses. Um, we built the, I bought this company in 97, and between 97 and year 2000, we built this trading platform. And we had no revenue, no customers, and I was stemming the, the, the million dollar a month loss, and, and obviously money was bleeding out of the company. And, and, but we built this platform. And we needed people to use the platform. And, uh, and the thing about trading is that every buyer needs a seller, and so it's got a network effect. It, it's a, it's an eBay or a Facebook effect, which means you need both people to be there at exactly the same time with exactly the opposite interests. And so you can only do that by having sheer numbers. And when you, when you have a blank screen and nothing going on, it's very hard to figure out how do you coordinate to get everybody to use it on the same day. And, and, and it is a, an interesting business problem, and it is a tipping point problem, that, like the book Tipping Point. Uh, and so um, we started to go around and Edwin and, and, and our president, Chuck Weiss, and I uh, visited 107 companies that we thought might be interested in trading. And um, uh, we showed them our thing, and we gave them demonstrations, and talked about the, you know, what, what you could do on the internet, so on and so forth. And one company in particular, the Crooked E, really liked what we were doing. They took an amazing interest in what we were doing. And, uh, and Jeff Skilling and the whole gang, that uh, you see in the movie. And so we would go to these meetings and we were having very high level meetings with them and we were showing them our stuff and they kept inviting us back and inviting us back and inviting us back. And one day, we're sitting in this meeting and this guy says to us, how do you stream your prices through port 443 with a Microsoft proxy server? And the light went on that they were building one of these things, <laughs> and we were educating them. And sure enough, in November of 1999, Enron announced Enron Online. And it looked and felt and acted a lot like what we had been building since 97. And we thought we were toast. We, I mean, we thought that, that's it. We just, we did the stupidest thing in the history of business which was we educated a competitor with everything that we knew, and they took it and outmaneuvered us. And so the good news is that they were doing all kind of other terrible stuff in there. <laughs> and so if you think of that graph that I showed you, um, after the collapse of Enron, our revenues took off.
And so uh, the, the guys with the white hats won. So we built this, uh, this incredible electronic trading platform. Today we do about 75 million transactions a day. Um, our average transaction, transaction time is 750 microseconds. Uh, to put that into context, 150 milliseconds <clears throat> is generally the blink of an eye. So we do 20 tr tr transactions in the blink of an eye. Um, today, as you may read about, if you read financial papers, humans are no longer trading with humans. It's computers that are trading with computers. So we, we have built a high velocity, high messaging, high trafficking, internet-based platform that allows computers to trade with each other.